Hello my darlings and welcome back to Read OMC. Today we are continuing with our chapter book Hope Was Here and we are on chapter 15. I saw my mother before she saw me. Saw her walking up the welcome stairways, tossing her long straight hair that was black like India ink. She was wearing tight jeans, heels, a beaded t-shirt, and sunglasses. She had a big canvas bag that read Miami Madness. Between her two big earrings and the collection of bracelets on her left arm, she made quite a racket, which caused most people in the place to look at her as she made her way to the counter. She plopped on a counter school stool, took off her sunglasses. Her eyes were heavily made up with the kind of mascara that extends and magnifies. I stood off by the coffee urn, feeling a primal pull to the woman who gave me life and no connection to her whatsoever. From the kitchen, Addie raised his spatula. The cook's hello. My mother waved excitedly. My turn. Remember, I told myself, the well is dry. I grabbed a coffee pot so that I had something to hold on to, walked to the counter, and wasn't sure how to get her attention because she was reading the menu like some people read a good mystery novel. So what do you do when your own mother, who you haven't seen for three and a half years, is sitting there at your counter not even looking for you? She'd come for lunch, I guess. Not me. Hey, Mom. Her head cocked at the unfamiliar word, word, mom, not hi. Her eyes got big and excited. She grabbed my hand with her two long ruby nails. <gasps> now don't tell me this is really you. Dina does motherhood. It's really me, I said, smiling weakly. Tulip, I can't tell you. I put my hand over hers. My name is Hope now, mom. Oh, well, I know, but I'll just never get used to. I need you to get used to it. Dina didn't like that. Her light blue eyes lost their sparkle. She took her hand away. She smiled fake. I'll try. You do that. I read a book about anger once and how people can have it but deny they do so it comes out in other ways. Passive aggressive behavior, the book called it. Now Dina was back to reading the menu like I wasn't there. I wanted to start screaming. Why did you bother coming back? Why don't you just go for good? She ordered a grilled chicken sandwich, semolina roll, avocado, mango mayonnaise, with sweet potato chips and iced tea. She ordered it like I wasn't her daughter. I walked to the galley fighting tears. I had to pull myself together. There's no crying aloud at lunchtime rush. I called in her order to Braverman and Annie. As I said, mango mayo on the side, I almost keeled over in grief. Annie leaned forward. You want to take a break? I shook my head. I didn't want to be alone. I just stood there, holding on to a big refill jar of sweet pickle relish. Every time my mother moved, I could hear her clatter. Braverman said, you want to be a clown? What? He took out a red sponge clown nose, put it over his nose, and raised one eyebrow. He looked completely absurd. I started giggling. He took it off, handed it to me. Wear it for a while. Now? Yeah. I held the red clown nose stood there for the longest time with the flurry of lunchtime pounding all around me. I put the nose over my nose and stared at Braverman, who started laughing. Addie cracked up, too. I turned around as Flo was coming around the corner. She stopped dead in her tracks, stared, and grinned. My heart was breaking, but this nose had power. I hit the counter, nose and all, and you should have seen those people's faces, including my mother's. Everyone was laughing and pointing, and my mother started chuckling. I did a little twirl getting someone ice water. You can do things like that in a red clown nose. I felt my gestures getting broader and kids were pointing and laughing and all of a sudden I heard the two dings from the galley, my signal. I went to pick up my mother's order with the mango mayo on the side. I stood in front of her, first flicking off the counter before her with the towel like she was really important. I placed the dish dramatically in front of her and bowed. That's my daughter, she said to the man next to her. Her name is, she caught herself. Hope. Good name, the man said. Well, that got me flying. I topped off coffee for the people at the counter, suggested dessert to a couple in the corner booth, blasted through some takeout orders, gave a teething baby an ice cube to suck on, which shut it right up. Mom was watching me, and I was glad because I didn't drop anything, didn't spill, didn't get upset when Yuri cleared away plates before the people at table six had finished their lunch. And when I grabbed my heart and leaned into their booth, begging for another chance, I'd bring them more food, they laughed and said, sure, they weren't in a hurry. Everyone was watching me and leaning big tips. A little boy said, 
I didn't know there were girl clowns. Stick around, kids. You might learn something. I did a funny walk to the ice cream serving area, lifted a maraschino cherry from a dish, waddled back to his table, and plopped the cherry on his nose. Little kids were coming up to touch the nose, and I gave every one of them cherries. They were all walking around trying to hold the cherries on their noses, sucking in the glory of being a clown. That's when GT walked into the diner looking tired as anything, but he took one look at me and started laughing too. I bowed low to the crowd, who applauded, and then I took the nose off and gave it back to Braverman. You keep it, he said. I stood there feeling the spongy red ball that had turned discouragement into hope. I was sitting with my mother in the corner booth. Addie had sat with us for a while, but she had entrees to get ready for dinner. They sure had a funny relationship. I could tell Dina looked up to Addie. She was always searching Addie's face for a response for whatever she said. You could also tell that Addie would never, ever believe that. It was almost time for Mom to leave. She had to drive back down to St. Louis to meet her new boyfriend, Eduardo. Mom liked men who had names ending in vowels. What happened to Dino? I asked. He was the last one she had mentioned. She flicked her fingernails on the table. Old news. Twice, I felt like putting the clown nose on again. The first was during the boxing exchange. Mom, are you still boxing? Me. I gave that up a long time ago. Mom, thank God. I was so concerned that you were doing that. I can't tell you. You were such an angry child. She always brought things back to the past. I worked it through, Mom. The second was during her fond farewell when she kept telling me how she hated having to go. It was wonderful to see me and we have to do this again real soon. The best part was when she gave me waitressing tips. I wrote them down on the back of my order book. I'd write them in the best of mom book later. Keep cut lemon wedges under the counter so you don't have to go to